Hello everyone, my name is Nicholas Mtinda from Nairobi branch. Welcome to this video. I'll be taking you through practice of management. Uh, practice of management is a very critical unit in your diploma course. The, the unit not only introduces you to various functions of management and theories in practice of management, but also enables you to grasp various management concepts which are very crucial in the today's management world. At the end of the course, each learner should be able to apply the concepts learned appropriately in the organizational setup and be able to analyze contemporary organizational issues and make critical decisions for the betterment of the organization. By understanding the unit clearly, one will be able to appreciate the role of management in an organization and why it is very crucial, why it is very important to have knowledgeable managers in charge of organizations in order to survive in this dynamic world, in this competitive world. Thank you. Before we go on, I would want to appreciate for watching me and kindly request that you subscribe to my channel. Subscription is free. You just need to click at the subscription button there below and you will not pay anything. It's free of charge. So I kindly request that you subscribe to my channel. Uh, thank you. So this unit is divided into 12 chapters. It's divided into 12 chapters and we will be going through each chapter. In order to ensure that each one of us understands, we'll be having two videos for each chapter. Two videos for each chapter. Probably 30 to 40 minutes. 30, 30 to 40 minutes. And though there are some chapters which are very short, which will require just a one video of about of 5 to 15 minutes and we will be done with the chapter. So let's start with the chapter 1. Chapter 1. <coughs> chapter 1. 1.1. Definition of management. What do we mean by management? What do we mean by management? And man management is the science and art of getting people together to accomplish desired goals and objectives by coordinating and integrating all available resources efficiently and effectively. Management is the science and the art of getting people together to accomplish desired goals and objectives by coordinating and integrating all available resources efficiently and effectively. Now, when you look at that definition, there are five key words. There are five key words. Science and art. What is the difference between science and art? When you say science, when we talk about science, what do we really mean? And science simply means facts. Something that can be scientifically proven. Something that can be empirically proven. Empirically proven. What do we mean by an art? An art is a land skill. Something that you can practice over time and be able to learn it. Now, when you are talking about management being a science and arts, we are simply, uh, we simply mean that management has some aspects which are science in nature and others which are an art in nature. For instance, when you're talking about accounting, 
accounting, which involves figures. Figures are facts. 2 times 8 is equal to 16. That is a fact and you cannot change it. 8 times 7 is equal to 56. That is a fact and you cannot change it. Now, when you talk about in the, in the personal skills, this is something that you learn over time by interacting with the people. When you are talking about motivating, I'm a motivation of the employees, we are simply meaning that this is something that you learn over time. So you find that management has some aspects which are scientific in nature and others which are art in nature. Now, another key word in that definition, another key word is that in that definition is what we call desired goals. Desired goals. In any management, there must be an objective. There must be an aim. You are aiming at achieving a certain objective. You are aiming at achieving a certain goal. There is somewhere where you are aiming at. It may be you are looking at in increasing your market share from 15% to 20%. It may be you are looking forward to decreasing your cost from 30% to 15% to 15 I'm by 15% there is an aim it may be you are aiming at introducing a new product in the market that is an aim so a management must some as must have a specific goal must have a specific objective Another word is what we are talking about, coordinating. Coordinating or integrating. What is to integrate? To integrate is to bring together. To integrate is to bring together. So, you as a manager, you may be in charge of a certain branch, you may be in charge of a certain department, you may be in charge of the whole organization. You have to bring all the employees together. You have to bring all the resources together in order to ensure that all you are working in tandem, aiming at achieving a certain objective, aiming at a certain goal. So you integrate all the efforts of each one in the department. You integrate all the efforts of the departments. You integrate all the efforts of the branch in order to ensure that you are able to maximally obtain the potential of each one in the organization in order to achieve the organizational objectives. Another one is what we call efficiently and effectively. So what do we mean by efficiently and effectively? The world we are living in is characterized by limited resources and unlimited ones. So, the resources are always viewed. So, we should be able to optimally utilize those resources. And that's why we are talking about efficiently and effectively. So, a manager should be able to efficiently utilize the resources. And when you are talking about effectively, we simply mean that you have to ensure that you achieve your goal effective. Are the management practices putting in place, are they effective in achieving this certain goal? Are we effective in achieving our objective? So you must be working efficiently and effectively. Now, lastly is what we call available resources. Available resources. And available resources are the things that you will use in order to achieve your objective. Here we may be talking about computers. We may be talking about uh, human resource. We may be talking about the money available. What are the available resources? What are the available resources? And one of the things that you have to note when you are talking about available resources, 
we simply uh, refer to 5 amps. 5 amps. Where we have money, where we have machines, where we have materials, where we have methods, machine, the money, machines, material, methods, and what else? Oh, man. And man. So, in any organization, it has all these materials. And for your information, we are going to be talking about these five M's in the whole course of the, uh, uh, in the whole uh, unit of practice of management. We'll be simply talking about how do we ensure that we optimize these five M's in order to achieve the organization objectives. So, how, how do you utilize the money that is available to you as a manager? How do you utilize the machines that are available to you as a manager? How do you utilize the methods, the materials, and men? How do you ensure that using this, you can be able to achieve the organizational objectives effectively and efficiently? How are you able to achieve all this? Uh, efficiently and effectively. To understand uh, management further, we can look at three folds, uh, three aspects of management. A certain guy called Buyo developed three aspects of management. Management is an economic factor. Management as a system of authority. And management as a class, as a status and class. So what we mean by management as an economic activity? We all know that we have land, capital, labor, and entrepreneurship as factors of production. So when we are talking about management as an economic factor, we are simply saying that you as a manager, you take the aspect of the entrepreneur. You have been given land. You have been given capital. You have been given labor. How do you optimally utilize those three resources in order to achieve the organizational objective? You as an economic factor. You are an economic factor and you are entering through as an entrepreneur. How do you ensure that the organizational objectives are really achieved? using the three factors of production that have been given unto you. Now, when we talk about management as a system of authority, we are simply meaning that you as a manager, you are in charge of a department, a section, or a branch, or even an, the whole organization. So, you as an as, as in charge, you can make the decisions, you can allocate resources, the ultimate responsibility lies under you. You are in charge of people, you can make decisions, you can make directions, you can control the people under your watch. So, you are in charge. There is a system of authority. If you are talking about somebody coming from outside to come to the organization, he will ultimately come to your office because he knows that you are in charge of the whole organization. You are in charge of the department. You are in charge of the branch. So you, you 
were a system of authority. Now, when we talk about management as a status or as a class, what do we mean? We simply mean that as a manager, there are certain behavior. There is a certain behavior you are expected. You are expected to behave in a certain way. You are expected to have special knowledge. You are expected to depict certain confidence. Because people are looking at you. That's why they pay you handsomely. Because they, they expect you to be dressed, smartly dressed. They expect you to be like a manager. They expect you to be like a manager because it is a status or a class. Now, having said that, having said that, there is some NB I would want us to look at. NB. NB. Something to note. Something to note. Management may have undergone metamorphosis. Metamorphosis. It may have undergone changes over time. It may have changed since probably 2000 years back. It may have changed. But irrespective of those changes, its purpose remained the same to achieve the organizational objectives. All these other things may have changed. All the principles, all the characteristics, all the concepts may change, but its purpose remained the same to achieve the objective of the organization. Now, we can quickly learn, uh, go through characteristics, characteristics of management, characteristics, characteristics of management. Number one is that management is systematic. And when you are talking about a systematic, it follows certain procedures. Will follow certain procedures. For instance, look at human resource management. For you to employ somebody, you have to put an advert, short list, interview, invite, uh, select, induction. That this is a process. It is systematic. When you talk about accounting. It is a process. When you talk about procurement, it is a process. It is something that is systematic. Number two is management is universal. Management is universal. Management is universal. When you are talking about universal, we are simply saying it doesn't matter the size of the organization. Whether it is a kiosk, whether it is a multinational, whether it is at the middle level or top level, management principles apply across. Management principles apply, apply across the organization. Whether you are talking about an organization in the US, whether you are talking about an organization in Chad, or Sierra Leone, or in Kenya, the, it is management is universal. When you talk about utilization of resources, men, machine, materials, methods, it is the same. It doesn't change. Another thing about management is purposeful. It is goal-oriented. 
it is aiming at achieving a certain objective. Another thing is integrative. We have talked about integrative, and when you probably to what when you are talking about integrative, for instance, take uh, production department, procurement department. Oh, you can, you can, you can demonstrate here. Production department, procurement department, finance. <laughs> for procurement department, for production department, to produce high quality goods. It requires to receive uh, the right raw materials. Where does it receive the raw materials? Raw materials are, uh, are procured by the procurement department. It is the, the finance department that pays for the procured raw materials. So, for the procured raw materials. Now, if finance does not work as expected, or there is some inefficiency in finance department. It means raw material suppliers will not be paid in time. And if they are not paid in time, that means that a production department will be affected in its production because it has not received raw materials. So you as a manager, you are required to bring all the departments together to ensure that they are working in tandem and there is good coordination. You integrate the efforts of finance department, you integrate the efforts of procurement department, you integrate the efforts of procurement department in order to ensure the organization can be able to achieve its objective. Now, number five, number five is what we call social process. <coughs> social process. And by social process, we mean that human management involves human beings. Management involves human beings who have feelings and can be asked. So we need to be careful because we are dealing with the human beings, not things, not objects. Number six is that management is efficient and effective. I think we have talked about that. Another thing is about it's a continuous process. It's a continuous process. Continuous process. <coughs> Another thing that it is multidisciplinary. When we are talking about multidisciplinary, we simply mean that management borrows from a wide variety of disciplines. Sociology, psychology, accounting, marketing, procurement, all this and more borrow, contribute to management. How do you socialize with people? How do you interact with people? Are you able to notice when somebody when somebody has probably some issues, probably has been bereaved, can you be able to cancel that person? Can you be able to notice when the accounts people are stealing from the organization? Because remember, it is that you are in charge of that department. It is your ultimate responsibility. So if you don't know about accounting, probably people will be stealing from the organization and you will be blamed for it. Marketing, procurement, it is a multidisciplinary. You pick knowledge from here and here and there. And remember we say the manager should be knowledgeable. A wide variety of knowledge. Another thing is that management is intangible. Management is intangible. 
management is, is intangible. And when we talk about intangible, we mind that you can't touch it, but you can feel it. You walk into an organization and you find it has a bad management, you get a bad service. And as you walk out, you say, this organization is very big, but the management is winding. Because you can feel it. Because you can feel it. Management is a science and a heart. I think we have talked about that. Management is a continuous process. Where you left in 2018 is where you took, you picked from in 2019. And it's where you are going to 2020. And it will go on. If you make probably mistakes here, there will be also consequences. You will find them. It is a continuous process. It's not discrete. It is not discrete. So we can... Uh, that is all about 1.1. So we can go to 1.2. 1.2, which is overview of management functions. Overview of management functions. What are the functions of management? One of them, we start with number one, is what we call planning. What do we mean by planning? What is planning? Planning is simply setting objectives. <coughs> setting objectives and coming up with courses, course of action to achieve the objectives. Learning is simply setting of objectives and coming up with course of action for achieving these objectives. So, you plan to open a new branch. This is the objective. You are setting the objective. How do I open the new branch? What are the course of action am I going to do to take in order to open the new branch? And for me to set this objective, something you have to know is that you have to scan the environment. You have to scan the environment. Tomorrow I will be going to town. I need to arrive at sound at around 8 a.m. This is my objective. I scan the environment. What is the cause of traffic jam? Will there be a traffic? No, tomorrow is an holiday. So there will be no traffic. I can take 30 minutes to town. You are scanning the environment. Now, Right now, we are under Corona, uh, COVID-19 pandemic. So, each one of the managers has set an objective. And the objective is to remain, is to ensure that they remain. They don't go under. Because there are several supply chain disruptions. The government has come up with the regulations. Now, you are scanning the environment. You are making decisions. You are setting objectives based on the prevailing environment. You scan the environment, set the objectives, and then set up a course of action of achieving those objectives. I know many of you, before you go to sleep, probably you plan for your uh, for the next day. Tomorrow I will go to work. Then from work go to class. Then from class do some shopping. Then visit a friend. I want to utilize my day effectively. Now, after plan. Probably to, uh, to, to go to the next uh, uh, function. We have what you call organizing. When you are talking about organizing, we are simply saying, now the objectives, the course of action that you have determined under planning. 
you prioritize. You prioritize. Allocate resources. Allocate resources. Know how you are going to achieve them. You organize. If you are talking about going to work, I will be at work from 8 to 5. You are locating resources now. Remember going to work 8 to 5. You are locating time as a resource. Now, after 5, I will go to class from 5 to 7. From 7, I will go for shopping. And then from 8, I will go visit my friend. You are locating resource, which is time. Now, how many do I need? How much resources do I need? How much resources do I need in order to achieve this objective? You organize. Which one do I start with? Which one do I end with? We need to open a new branch. Where will we get the funds? Where will we get the funds? Where, which is the most appropriate place to open that branch? Which is the most appropriate? Probably you guys, after you finish your course here, you will need to go and uh, celebrate, the celebra uh, have a party, have a bash to celebrate. Now, you are fed, there is a party. Now, for organizing, when will we have that party? Is it on a weekday or on a weekend? Is it on a Saturday or on a Sunday? From what time? Is it from 2 p.m.? Is it from 12 p.m.? Is it from 4 p.m.? You are organizing. Who will be? What is the cost? Probably 200,000. We are about probably 100. So each one of us, uh, we are about 200. So each one of us must contribute 1,000 a thousand shillings. Who will be the treasurer? Where are we sending the money? Do we eat Nyamachoma or do we eat, is it what? Kukuchoma? How? You organize it. Now, after you are through with organizing, we go to the that which is staffing. Staffing. Staffing, we are simply talking about human resources. Here, you ensure that you have the right quality and quantity of employees quality and quantity of employees required in order to achieve the objectives of the organization you ensure that you have the right number you have the right kind of employees where do we get them do we put adverts how much do we promote the ones we have we are talking about opening a new branch. Do we transfer from probably two from the the, free, the branches that we have? How much do we get fresh ones? Staffing function. Remember, you may have all the required resources, but if you don't have the right kind of employees, achievement of organizational objectives will still remain a pipe dream. Pipe dream. Number four is what we call leading, motivating, or directing. Employees need to be directed. They need to be shown the way. They need to be highly motivated in order to achieve the organizational objectives. 
This is a very crucial function of managers. You cannot be talking about the right number of employees if you don't motivate them. Remember, you might have the best employees in the market, but you find they are not unleashing their full potential. Maybe they have the full potential, but you are not giving them the right direction. You need to ensure that they are walking in the right direction, empowering them, motivating them, leading them, showing them the way in order to ensure that they achieve the organizational objective. Number five is with what we call controlling. When we are talking about controlling, we mean that in every organization there are guidelines, there are procedures, there are standards, there are norms, there are traditions. Now, controlling is ensuring that the employee or the work, the working, the working is being done within the guidelines, within the procedures, within the standards, within the quality norms. You are working within. If you are talking about, for instance, a referee ensures that the players work within the field. They follow the guidelines. Bila ikitoka inje huku, referee na pulisa kipenga. Somebody ya mekanyaka mungine, referee na pulisa kipenga. Because there are certain guidelines, there are rules, there are procedures, there are regulations to be followed. You ensure that they are being followed as expected. So you are controlling. Remember, you are in charge. If a certain good does not meet the quality standards, the problem is you. The mistake is yours because you have not ensured that the employees follow the guidelines in terms of quality. So you control them to ensure that everything is done within uh, the required standards. And then lastly, is what we call coordination. Coordination. And coordination, we are simply talking about product. We are simply ensuring that all the departments work in tandem. I think I explained that production is working in tandem with the procurement, is working in tandem with finance, is working with marketing, is working in tandem with human resource management. Because no department, no branch, not even an individual, no matter how effective he is, no matter how efficient he is, he can be able to achieve the organizational objectives. It takes the collective responsibility of everyone in the organization. It takes the collective responsibility of every department in order to achieve the organizational objectives. If finance does not work correctly, it means it's affecting all the other departments. If human resource, if there is a problem with human resource management, it means all the other organizations do not get quality employees because there is a problem. Probably here there is somebody who is getting bribes to employ unqualified people. Probably here finance there is some inefficiency. People are not being paid on time. Suppliers are not being paid. It will affect the organization as a whole. If there is a problem in the production, it means goods that are being produced are of low quality. And the organization cannot be able to increase the market share. The organization cannot be able to sell its goods. The organization cannot be able to make profits because there is a problem. So how do you coordinate 
all those branches? How do you coordinate all these departments to ensure that they are working in tandem? They are working towards a common objective. How do we ensure that? Now, I think we can, uh, we are through with 1.2, the overview of management functions. So we can quickly look at 1.3, overview of core functional areas. of management. You must be very careful <coughs> not to confuse overview of management functions and overview of core functional areas of management. When you are talking about core functional areas, we are simply meaning those things that the manager is involved in day in, day out. And there are five, probably we are going to discuss five, there may be more, and one of them is what we call human resource management. And here we are simply uh, talking about ensuring that the organization you are heading, ensuring that human resources work harmoniously towards achievement of the goals. To ensure that human employees, uh, employees their performance is good. Amai is being, uh, they have a high performance. Productivity. The issues about human resources and what you are, you are concerned with as a manager. If you are talking about desk one, desk two, desk three, are these guys working optimally do we have a problem is everyone satisfied the human resource employee issues human resource management number two is what we call office management office management and here we are talking about the layout of the office. How is the office? Is everyone comfortable? Do we have enough space for each one? Do we have enough computers? What is the environment? the office? Is it conducive? What is the environment in the office? Is it conducive? What is the communication in the office? Is it good? Is it good? The office, the correspondence, the management aspect, the office layout, the correspondence. How is it? The other one, probably, uh, we can talk about is what we call financial management. When you talk about financial management, we simply uh, mean about the issue about finance. Financial management. Here we are talking about investment decisions. Acquisition of funds and utilization of the funds. Are we utilizing the available money prudently? How are we making investments? Does opening a new branch bring us Profits. Does scaling up our operations, especially at, at this period, do we open a new branch? Do we close those other branches? Do we what? Do we, what are the investment decisions we make? Right now, organizations are going through cash flow problems. 
Where do they get money to pay their employees? Where do they get money to pay their rent? Because goods are not moving. There is an economic downturn because of the corona pandemic. Where do we get funds? Do we borrow? Do we ask for more money, for more capital from our shareholders? Acquisition of funds. How do we utilize them? Do we scale down operations? Issues about that. The other one is about production. Production. And here we are simply talking about when you are talking about manufacturing uh, goods and services. What are the quality concerns? Quality concerns. Quality concerns. Quality concerns. The other one is what we call marketing. Here we talk about several issues. What is are the distribution channels? Are our goods reaching to the customer in the required state at the required time on time? What are the pricing mechanisms? Why do we set a price of at 20 shillings per chapati and not 15 shillings per chapati? How do we sell a desk at 1,000 shillings and not 1,200? What are our competitors' prices? The pricing mechanisms. Market segmentation. market segmentations do we do promotions how much do we do adverts how do we ensure that our goods and services are received well by the consumers those are the things we are talking about when you are talking about marketing you are talking about marketing and unless there is a question I think that marks the end of our first video. It is 47 minutes. And probably to remind you, kindly subscribe to this channel. It is free of charge. Kindly subscribe. It is free of charge. Just, you just need to click the subscribe button there below. And you will will have subscribed in order to ensure that you get these videos thank you for watching